Good morning, everyone. It looks like it's 10 o'clock time uh, for the North Texas Outdoor Watering Summit. I see that folks are still joining. Um, we have a lot on the schedule and a tight schedule, so I'm going to go ahead and get started um, with our program here this morning. Jonathan, can you go to the next slide, please? So thank you for joining us for the North Texas Outdoor Watering Summit. We have a great program set up for you all over the next three days. I'm gonna go over some logistics and then I wanna give you a little background and context on why we're focusing on outdoor watering and why North Texas in particular. I wanna note that we have many folks participating in this webinar from all over Texas. Uh, we're gonna present some North Texas specific data today but most of the information that we will be providing over the next couple of days provides to all communities in Texas. Regional climate, water supply, customer makeup, and community practices vary across our state. Communities will most likely see a variety of savings based on these factors and others. There are a few, if any, communities that will not benefit from putting programs in place to reduce outdoor watering. So no matter what part of the state you're from, stick around and learn with us over the next couple of days. The summit will be presented over three days and we accordingly break in the content up into three parts. Today, day one, we'll be focusing on why outdoor watering matters for North Texas and really all of the state. We'll hear from Director Kathleen Jackson from the Texas Water Development Board, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, the Region C Water Planning Group, and finally, we'll get a review of some outstanding education programs. Tomorrow, Wednesday, on day two, we'll get into the nitty gritty of how to plan, draft, and adopt outdoor watering ordinances. We'll hear from peer cities about their approaches and lessons learned, and we'll hear about the materials from the Texas Water Conservation Advisory Council. Um, we'll hear the materials that they've developed to help walk you through this process. And on day three, we're gonna focus on locking in and building water savings. We'll learn about what motivates customers to make changes in their landscapes and how to support them in doing so. Thursday is all about savings potential, customer behavior, and sharing regional initiatives. We have an ambitious schedule each day and we'd love to go deeper into the content than we're able to. We've attempted to put together a program that gets you the basic information you need and the resources to dig further. Next slide. Everyone in the audience, oh, okay, so a few logistics since we're in this virtual situation here. Everyone in the audience is in attendee mode. You will not be able to turn on your mic or camera, but that does not mean that we don't wanna hear from you. I invite you to post your questions using the Q&A function in Zoom. You will see the little Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. It is circled here on and red on the screenshot included in this slide. Click on that icon and then type in your questions. If somebody asks a question that you're interested in hearing the answer to, you can click on the little thumbs up icon and indicate your interest in that question as well. It's called upvoting. Uh, we, have we have allotted time for Q&A at the end of each session. And um, as long as we stay on schedule, our Q&A moderator today is Dustin Compton from Tarrant Regional Water District. And we appreciate him taking that on today. You'll also notice that there's a chat button. We'll be able to send you messages about links and other important information through that. One of the great things about our water conservation focus gatherings is a networking. And unfortunately, we're not able to all be together just yet. In order to help you know who's, that you're here with a group of peers today, um, we have posted a list of the summit attendees. Um, there's a link in the chat and um, you can find all this information that we talk about on the landing page as well. We will be recording the presentations and we'll post the recordings and all the slide decks on our website at texaslivingwaters.org and also on the North Texas Outdoor Watering Summit landing page. Next. I wanna give a shout out to our steering committee. We've had folks from each of these organizations work closely with us as we plan this event. We appreciate their time and creativity and, um, and we've had to pivot several times during the planning of this event due to the pandemic. And we appreciate everyone hanging in with us as, as things have shifted. Um, this was originally planned as a May in-person event and then 
in person in October, and then it became clear that it was going to be an online event. So we've definitely have had to um, pivot several times. Last but not least, I want to acknowledge my colleague, Jonathan Seafelt. He is making everything work behind the scenes. He's advancing the slides. He's putting things in chat. He built the little website that we have. Um, if everything works without a hitch, it's because of Jonathan. And if uh, things go awry, let's just say it's my fault. Um, so on to why we're here today. Next slide. Why focus on outdoor watering? We all have different reasons to embrace saving water. Conservation benefits our existing water supply and in most cases, it costs less to support a top-notch conservation program than to procure additional water supplies. And most important, there may not be enough fresh, clean water to go around if we aren't serious about water efficiency. Why is the National Wildlife Federation interested in water conservation? Through the Texas Living Waters Project, we have been working on water planning and water supply management for many years. We endeavor to be strong allies and help utilities with tools and information to make sound water supply decisions. Like you all, we want to ensure that we have water for the people of Texas, while also ensuring that we are leaving sufficient water in our rivers, aquifers, and estuaries to support fish and wildlife habitat. Texas has an amazing natural heritage and it runs on water just like the rest of the state. We need to do all we can to conserve this precious resource. One of the primary reasons outdoor watering limitations are so effective is that landscape irrigation is estimated to be the single largest component of municipal water use. And municipal water use is the second largest water use in Texas, but just behind agriculture. Given the proportion of municipal water use that is used on outdoor watering, especially in the summer months, and that many people overwater their lawns, outdoor watering limits are a logical and effective tool to, for municipalities and water utilities to use to save water. In many cases, limits on outdoor watering have been implemented in response to drought. While this strategy provides immediate relief to stretch existing supplies and bring savings in time of crises, ongoing outdoor water limits can, provide, can drive long-term reductions in municipal per capita water use not only providing consistent overall savings, but building greater water resiliency for communities facing increasingly frequent and severe drought. Next. So a few more reasons why we're focusing on outdoor watering and why rating in outdoor watering is a good idea. When it gets hot and dry, people run their automatic irrigation systems and water use goes up. In some cases, it goes way up. And the complaints roll in um, right along with the next round of water bills. Uh, we heard a lot about this last summer in Texas. With no more than two time per week watering, this will happen less. Um, in Texas, TCQ regulations require that utilities upgrade their treatment capacity to meet peak watering demand, which is generally summer water use. It is good for utilities bottom line to not have to invest in infrastructure that may be used just a part of the time. A set watering schedule can reduce peak, uh, peak water use and add some regularity to the watering, um, watering profile for utilities. Third, um, limiting outdoor watering reduces the odds of having to enact drought contingency plans or go into deeper drought restrictions. Most drought contingency plans are based on water supply or treatment triggers. Texas is a rapidly growing state and new people are moving here all the time. Many of them are living in houses with irrigation systems and they're living in a climate they don't understand. Limiting outdoor watering to no more than twice per week can be helpful and it's really not a message of deprivation. Utilities can be the customer's trusted authority and help them have a beautiful landscape while only using what they need. And last, conservation helps the environment and downstream utilities. And that's really important. Next. So um, in thinking about this, this summit, we wanted, we were asking ourselves, what are North Texas utilities doing on outdoor watering? So you'll hear more from the speakers about the role conservation and the limits on outdoor watering play in meeting North Texas's future water supply. Our team, in doing preliminary work for this, looked at the 272 water user groups in Region C 
Um, there's more water user groups in this in Region C, but we didn't look at the ones that were consolidated like county other and stuff like that. So we looked specifically at the implementation of outdoor watering restrictions, the projected savings associated with this strategy and the opportunities for North Texas utilities to leverage these savings as they prepare for the future. Region C is the water planning group designation for central North Texas. We'll show you a map in a second if you aren't familiar with it. So out of the 272 communities that we looked at, we found that 45 limit the number of days per week that customers can irrigate their lawns. And only and 36 only have limits on time uh, on the time of day people can water in place. So and so that leaves 70% or 191 North Texas utilities that do not have limits in place. That's not very encouraging, unless you break it down by population. When you do that, you see that 65% of the people in North Texas are living in a community that limits the number of days per week they can irrigate their lawns and 17% live in a, in a community with time of day restrictions. There's definitely room for improvement, but it's good to know that a majority of North Texans live in communities that have limits in place, and this is really becoming um, more of a normal operating procedure in North Texas. Next. In case you're a map person like we, we have mapped our findings and listed the cities that each have each type of limit in place. And we've also listed them by size. Um, because a bigger community will save more water because there's more people to save water. Not always the case, but um, so we've mapped our findings and listed the cities. The orange dots are the cities with two time per week watering schedule. The green dots are communities that have limits on the time of day. And the purple dot is the one city that has once per day outdoor watering in North Texas. That would be Frisco. And the dots are also sized by the relative size of the city. This is probably kind of hard to see on the screen here, but Jonathan um, and I will put a link in the chat so you can download this report. It's all on the landing page for the summit. Next slide. So the North Texas Outdoor Watering Summit is hot off the press. Um, as I just described, we examine which utilities have limits on outdoor watering in place. We are steeped in water planning and we wanna quantify what role conservation plays in our future water supply. To that end, we use the Region C plan, which is, I don't know if it's been finally adopted yet, but all the regional water plans will be adopted by early November. So it's very close to completion. We compared water needs or shortages to each water group for the amount of water, uh, for, for each water groups to the amount of water that we predicted can be saved from implementing no more than twice per week watering. And then for our water savings estimates, we use data from the Region C plan and data from our 2018 report, Water Conservation by the Yard. Um, I'm gonna show you a table of that in one second. And like I said, the report can be um, downloaded at the North Texas Outdoor Watering Summit landing page. So next slide, Jonathan. So whether we reduce water use by 3%, which is what Region C predicts, or 7% or 11%, which is the range that we predict in water conservation by the yard. Um, you can see that outdoor watering, is, it's clear that this is an important strategy for North Texas's future. The most important columns to look at here are the two columns on the right. Um, you see projected needs in acre feet per year by decade for the North Texas region, region C. And then in the far right column, you can see the amount of water that um, these, this conservation strategy can make up. So it can make up a significant portion of the water needed for future water supplies in North Texas. Um, putting limits on outdoor watering and um, using water efficiently, and I'm not talking about deprivation here, we're talking about having beautiful North Texas landscapes, but to get a handle on outdoor watering. Um, it really is a very good solution for North Texas. Um, next. So you'll see me a lot today as I pop on and off your screen to introduce speakers. I wanna thank you all for um, being here today. And it looks like I already have us ahead of schedule by a few minutes, which is great. Um, I wanna encourage you to download a copy of the North Texas Outdoor Watering Survey online. We also have a link to all of our speakers. I mean, our speakers. Well, yes, there's a link to all the speakers on the landing page, but also all the attendees. Because I, I do think it's, 
kind of hard for us to all be here and and not visit with all our colleagues and see them and everything. At least we can all know who's here together today. 